previously on Seaside Garage. I'm going to save this chassis. Hello and welcome back. And really, I was, <laughs> I really had plans to save this chassis. It is really savable, in my opinion. Um, but there's a couple of reasons why I have made another decision. I have found some more rust. For instance, I can stab a screwdriver inside the leg back there. It's not that bad, but that's one spot. Another spot is where the space frame rests on the frame of the Mahari. It's really thin. You can actually go through it some places. Again, it's not a really big deal. It's easy to fix, I mean. The folded over edge are in some places really swollen up. That is normally caused of rust. So it has to be folded up, fixed, and then folded back. Again, not a huge deal, but another deal. Um, at the front end up here, right before the cross member, is a crumple zone on the 2CV. It's a bit thinner than the rest of it. it it's, as far as I know, it's designed to make the, uh, the chassis buckle down in case of a head-on collision. So the engine sort of goes underneath the car instead of into the car. Makes sense. But that's the place they tend to break or snap when they get too rusty. And you can hear it when I knock on the, on the thick side. And then on the thin side right here. And it's supposed to be thinner, but it is really thin. And I can't really see how thin it is, but I can see that slight, slight taps with the hammer is deforming it quite a lot. Again, I don't think it's too bad. I think it could be safe just by grinding it down and painting it and all that. But there's just so much small stuff. And there's pretty much three reasons why I have changed my mind about this chassis. One thing, I found a new galvanized chassis for around 800 euros. That's pretty cheap, brand new. Everything is, uh, is good with that. Reason number two, the Mahari is getting really expensive. It's not really my thing to fix up cars to just sell them on for a profit. That's not the reason why I do it, at least. And normally I tend to spend just as much money on fixing them that I can sell them for. So it's not really a good business, this thing I'm doing here. But the Mahari is a little bit different because it is getting very, really expensive. I know my plans are not to sell it for the time being when it's done, but I'm pretty sure it will happen at some point. And, and if the time comes that I'm going to sell this one, I know that everyone who comes to look at it will ask me if the chassis is original or, is it's, or if it's changed. And if I can present a completely galvanized, completely clean chassis, the price will be much higher than with the old rusty chassis underneath it. And the last thing, and maybe the most important thing, I have a bit of motivation issues on the chassis of this one. I am looking so much forward to fixing the engine, the suspension, and, and the space frame. I'm really looking forward to trying to weld that up. But the thought about grinding this down to clean metal and painting it with epoxy primer, and I just have a bit of a hard time really getting into that, uh, to be honest. <laughs> and especially since a galvanized chassis is so cheap. So the decision has been made. I am swapping the chassis on my Mahari. And not only did I make the decision, I actually already bought and picked up the galvanized chassis. So the new plans for the Mahari project is, I want the Mahari chassis, suspension, uh, axles and engine to look brand new. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna take the engine completely apart, check that everything is all right and rebuild it, paint all the parts, clean all the parts and get the underneath of, of, of the Mahari looking completely perfect. And that means we need to get started taking stuff off the old chassis. A really cool part of my Mahari is this. It got a tow bar. So I'm going to take off the tow bar. Like that. And then a little bag for all the hardware that I would like to clean up. Maybe I should figure out how to plate stuff, because that could be pretty cool. Next piece is the rear axle. To remove that, I need to remove the split pin holding in the knife point. Like that. 
like that. Before removing it though, I need to jack up this chassis because right now the suspension is what keeps pressure on the axle to keep it down. So if I just remove it now, it would just collapse completely. Don't want that. But there is still tension on this one. So I need to unscrew it a bit to release the tension to get this one out because otherwise it will just wreck it. This is just supposed to screw out, but, but of course it's old, rusty and all that. So it's going to be a bit difficult. So I'm going to soak it, then I'm going to heat it and hopefully we can get it to move. While I wait, I'm going to remove this one, the shock absorber. Like that. I also need to remove this one because that is needed on the new chassis. That is stuck, so I'm gonna heat it up. Ah, there we go. That worked. Heat is really a game changer. I am tempted to go and buy an induction heater at some point because that seems so clever. Expensive, but clever. But just a gas thought charge like mine is just fine to heat it up and make it easier to to work on. I'm going to try the same right there, heat it up, and hopefully we can get it to spin. This is actually what controls the ride height on a 2CV, and it's something that needs to be adjusted from time to time, and really often you see wrongly adjusted 2CVs. Um, it's not that it makes a world of difference, but it is supposed to ride at a special, a specified height. And it's a bit different on the Mahari because of weight, of course. Let's see if it made any difference. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> I love that. So I need to wind it this way to release the tension, I'm pretty sure of. It's a clever system, this. On the other hand, when I fixed the other Mahari I did a couple of years back, that was the first time I worked on, on the suspension system like this. Um, I was quite surprised about how much trust you need to put in these metal bars because they are the one that holds the car up. If it, if it snaps, it will just fall to the ground on that side. And yes, I know someone who actually experienced that and had to fix it on the road by clamping some <laughs> Jubilee clips together and stuff. Pretty crazy. Like that. Yep, now this is what you call the knife point on a Citroen 2CV chassis. And you, as you can see, this is really, maybe you can see that this is really worn, it needs to be changed. But this should be a bit sharper than this. But that's the pivoting point for the for the suspension. This one pivots right there when the car car goes up and down. This needs to be greased. A lot of people forget that. On mine, I just need to change it. Maybe even this one because it's slightly worn as well. But yeah, it's really crude as you can see. It's just a big nut without any thread in it that is welded onto a piece of rod, and then a piece of metal with a sharp edge. It's simple. I think that is uh, one of the most amazing parts about the 2CV and the Maharis and all that. It's simple, but really clever engineering. I'm gonna do the exact same on the other side. Unfortunately, the other side is way worse when it comes to getting stuff loose. I got the shock absorber off, but the tube in the rubber bushing stayed on, on both sides. I think I'm going to be able to get them off later on, but they will just have to soak. Then I gave this a lot of heat, nothing worked. Then I gave this a lot of, uh, of freeze spray, didn't work. Then suddenly it started to move and then I noticed it's not moving, it's twisting. So this is no good anymore because it's twisting quite a lot there. It would be very fatigued already now, it will snap. So at, at least I need a new one of these. Um, if you know this system, 
you know that you cannot just change this because it goes into this it goes into this tube down there. But that doesn't really matter because my plan is to cut this tube open, fix and clean the inside, paint the tube, weld another end on because it's quite rusty, and then fit everything back together. So it's not a big problem that I need to change this. I just hope I can get a hold of one. It shouldn't be a big problem. But this one, I'm gonna cut with an angle grinder now, so I don't forget that it's broken. Um, and then, yeah, that is just going to be that. And before removing the rear axle, I'm just gonna take off the wheels. I'm not gonna remove anything else on the rear axle at the moment. We need to take the swing arms off and all that. That needs a special tool. I need to get a hold or create one. But in this video, I'm just gonna remove the entire rear axle. So brakes and all that will stay on. Interesting though, we have a sticker on the uh, hop, hop nut protection cap. <laughs> Hello, hop nut. Um, it could just be an original spare part, but it could also mean, mean that this is just from the factory. It's never been a part or anything like that. Hmm. Interesting. I haven't seen that stick kind of sticker before. Next bit, there are two long balls right there and there on both sides that needs to come out. That is all that is holding the rear axle attached to the chassis. Then there is a brake line, which I'm just going to cut because we're going to change those. And then we should be able to take the rear axle off. Be aware there is a locking tab that needs to be pried open before attempting to release it. Ah, that was easy. <laughs> oh yeah, this is stuck. <sighs> yeah, we're not gonna get it, get that off. That's for sure. It won't be difficult, I think, to get off once the axle is off because I can grab a hold of it in another way and heat it more precisely. So I'm just gonna cut the nut head off down here, and then hopefully we can go from there. Let's try the other side. Nope. I'm gonna cut it right there. And then loosen it up. Oh, that was easy. And the other side, it's not going to be so easy. There we go. Whoops. <laughs> I got lucky there. I could have had it landing on my feet. Um, yeah, it's not that heavy, but still, I should have taken a bit more care. Now I can get this one out. Whoops. As you can see, it's not very heavy, but still, don't want that to land on you, on your feet. And now I'm going to continue on the front end to remove the shock absorber and hopefully loosen up that one. These I know from experience can be really tight. Oh, yeah, that was easy. You never really know when taking apart old stuff. Something can just be completely fused together and other stuff can be taken out with the fingers, which is pretty unbelievable considering how difficult it was last time around when I took off one of these. There we go. And like before, we're going to try to use heat to hopefully get it out. If we can get this one out, we got one complete side out without any damage, and that would be nice. There we go. Nice. Yeah, I got a new one. <laughs> the other one, one broke down when taking off, uh, when trying to heat up the other side. So I went to the local shop and got one with a much warmer uh, flame, which makes it even better. The other one has been on its way out for quite a while, actually. So it wasn't a big surprise. You might notice that I haven't jacked up the front just yet. That's because the front end won't co collapse completely if this one breaks. It will rest on that one. So I don't have to do it just now. Like that. 
And I'm going to do the exact same on the other side. And then we can take out the, the, uh, the spring parts. So with that stuff removed from the other side, I'm going to try to focus on the uh, nuts right here to remove the seat rest. And uh, they seem to be rather rusty, so, I, so I'm not sure I'm actually going to be able to take them off, but uh, I'm going to try. Ah, this is way too big. That is more like it. Like this. And next up, it's the spring pots that needs to come off. Um, normally, I would try to loosen them up using this gigantic wrench. I actually got this one loose already, but I actually forgot. But I already have a set of brand new mounting pieces for this uh, for this suspension part, and I know from experience that this rubber bush bushing will be completely seized to this part of it, so it will be so extremely difficult to get off in one piece. I only need this one and the rods, um, so I'm just going to cut the fittings off and then uh, take it off. That will be a lot easier. So be back in a second when I have cut away what I need to cut away. Anyway, and then we can think this is now loose and then there is a bit of a, a cut in this one, but I need to take this one out first and then this one through the cut. And we should be able to just slide it all off. Of course, this rubber needs to come off as well. Also, in the kit that I bought for this, I think I got new rubbers as well. It, it needs new rubbers, I can see that, so no doubt about that. Don't want sand and crap to come inside your, your spring pots because it will be all the time. Not in a good way. There we go, one spring pot out, and I already took out the other one, so perfect. What I have left to do is to remove the front axle. I'm just going to remove the entire bunch in one go, and then take it apart later on, because I'm going to rebuild it, of course. So let's see if I can get those nuts free, or, or if I have to cut them once again. Oh, the tabs on this one was actually not bent. So... Uh, Quality control at Citroen. Oh, it actually is actually turning this one. Both of them actually. There we go. It's coming free as well. Amazing. Before I can actually take it off, I need to take off the battery tray. So I'm just going to do that real quick. That. But I still need to remove the handbrake mechanism. There we go. That's all we need to take off. These rubber bushings could be taken off as well, but I'm not going to reuse them. So, um, oh, and the tight plate, but I'm going to do that later. This is all for now. So this is it. I got all the parts off the old chassis pretty much. Maybe there's some minor stuff that I forgot and, and some shock absorber bolts that are stuck that I need to work on. I've sprayed them down and will let them penetrate and then hopefully I can get them out. Otherwise I will need new ones of those. But everything is now ready to be cleaned up, painted, repaired, and then slowly be put back on the garbage can I have over here. And actually I noticed one thing while flipping over the old chassis and that made me even more happy that I took this decision. At this suspension mount and shock absorber mount, you can see some really rough weldings, even more rough inside of there. I'm pretty sure that this entire assembly has been cut off at some point, maybe fallen off, who knows, it's a citring after all, and, been, and then been welded back on really sloppy. 
Uh, so it's just nice to know that this is no longer a concern. This is the place that I step through with a screwdriver. There's also this area that needed a lot of work, so I think it's the right decision. This is all for now. This was a really important step for the Mahari project because I had really had a high hard time deciding what to do. Now I decided something and I have dug into the, uh, to the work. Now I need to clean all those parts up and paint them and fix them and I'm really looking forward to that. I'm gonna do that first, get the axles back on the, uh, on the chassis get that space frame welded up and then start working on the engine because I really am looking forward to working on that engine. And it's always nice to have a little carrot at the end of the, uh, of the journey. Not that I'm not looking forward to all the other stuff because I really am too. It's just, I, it's a lovely project. But anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for the support I get on Patreon and see you in the next one.